Atlanta, Georgia, and welcome to Cooking with the Millennials, where I teach them to cook, and they teach us baby boomers how to use social media. <laughs> Today's special guests are Nate, Nadia, yes, and Ryan. So welcome, you guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we're so we're excited. excited to be here. Thanks for coming out. Now, who does the cooking mostly at the house? Me, yeah? but I'm here to learn. Well, that's <laughs> what we're here for. We're here to talk about how to do it. And it's, it's easier than you think it's going to be. Sure. So before we start, we're going to do Quiz the Millennials. Do you know <laughs> what this is? It no. kind of looks like a peeler. A peeler? Nope. One more guess. You getting this, Chad? Yeah. And I'm like, is it a me something to measure with? It, it was in every house back in the 60s and 70s when I was growing up. Because back then, our cars were not as good as they are today. And everybody had to put their own oil in their cars. Oh. That's, oh. that's what our oil cans look like. Wow. You know where I find this stuff? Antique stores. Things I grew up with I find on the antique store. God, I'm getting old. Wow. Well, you would just take this sharp point here and push it down into the can and oh, then wow. you just pour it into the crankcase of your car. That's actually wow. really cool. How about that? So when we were our kids, anytime you stop at the gas station, you were not allowed to pump your own gas. You weren't allowed to get out of your car. The guy would come up to your car wiping his hands off because he's working on somebody's engine and say, what do you have? And we'd say, give me a dollar's worth of regular. He would lift the hood, check your oil, and wash your windshield. Wow. Now, why would we only get a dollar's worth of gas? Because you got three gallons of gas for a dollar. 33 cents a gallon back then. That's wow, crazy. that is crazy. So, that's my generation. That's awesome. Let's step into yours now. it's now. a <laughs> Great. So, yeah, today we're going to make a really simple recipe. It's called white bean turkey chili. And you've got the recipe here in front of you, Ryan. And as you can see, if you look at the way the ingredients are in, uh, lined up on that recipe, that's exactly the way they go into the pot. So if, when you're doing your prep for when you're making the recipe at home, you line everything up on the counter in order of the recipe. That way when you're putting it in the pot, you're just following along. Now once we have everything set up, the French call this mise en place. I call it have every, everything lined up and go in the pot. It's easier that way. <laughs> yes. So now that we have everything lined up and ready to go, we can just actually take this. We don't even need any more. Oh. Wow. Because everything's ready to go. Let's we can go. enjoy our wine. You're confident. I like yes. it. Yes. can do it. Now, today's uh, sponsor, Ogio Prosecco. We're going to be actually enjoying some of this with our meal because it goes great with this dish. And we're also going to be cooking with this. This is actually going to be used in the recipe itself. And we'll show you that as well. So, the Ogio uh, prosecco is, of course, from northern Italy, northwestern Italy, and it's very warm in our warm in that region because it's more north than the rest of the country. Oh, excuse me, it's cooler. It's cooler. So that means that the grapes are going to be a little bit more fruitier and a little bit more sweeter. So when they actually make this wine, uh, the prosecco, it's not like champagne. Mm -hmm. Champagne is made still like a regular wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc we made. Yeah. But then champagne, they'd put the wine in the bottle and put a little bit of yeast in that bottle and cork it with a little cap on top. And the yeast will make the gas, but the gas can't escape. That's why you get the bubbles in champagne. So with the Prosecco, it's a little different. The secondary fermentation is done in these gigantic steel tanks. They put the yeast in for the second time, but they cap it off where the gases can't get out, just like with champagne. And you get that natural carbonation, okay. which is like putting CO2 to make club soda and out of water. Okay. So that's the joy of it. And this Prosecco, I'll tell you, it's, it's delicious. It's, it's fruity. It's got tons of apple and pear. The bubbles are nice and tight and smooth. And it's just great with just about anything. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far, that's for sure. Man. Well, we're going to start with cutting an onion. So we'll go ahead and grab this onion here. Okay. And we're going to give this thing a nice dice and chop. So you're going to cut it from top to bottom, which is the stem to the root. Okay. All the way across and down. Like all the way through? Yep. Okay. There you go. Now you're going to remove just the tip. You're going to leave that hairy root. I'm not allowed to touch okay. anything, by the way. <laughs> okay. This, this is this, the way we do with the cooking millennials. You guys cook and I just talk. Is it more fun so that way? Spin right. around the other way. This way. That's it. That's the, that's the top of the onion. The root part you want to keep intact. So okay. just, just take out the top. A little bit more than that. There you go. And now you're going to take off the outer peel. Okay. Just go ahead and so pick up one? both of them. Go ahead and cut them. Go no. ahead and pick up the onion and just oh. take off the outer peel. That's okay. it. And you're going to do the same thing to the second one. You're going to cut it off and remove that outer peel. You did this a lot easier. Yeah. 
Well, this is um, actually part of our, our <laughs> video we have for Knife Skills video, okay. which is on the uh, uh, yeah. our YouTube site. And you want to go one more layer down. Wow. One more down. There you go. Is that one having a difficult time? Yep. Just you, you can even go two layers if you want. Here? There you, there you go. Just whip it all off and <laughs> all the way down. There you go. So we're going to get Let's rid of go. that skin because the good skin doesn't great. taste very good. <laughs> There you go, looking good. Well, listen, if I can do this, this means anybody can make this. That's it. That's true. <laughs> and do the same thing to the second side. Okay. And the other piece, we're going to cut the top off the other one. Peel it. Then we're going to throw those peels in the trash can to your right. Okay. Other side. Oh. Other way. That's the root end. There you go. Oh. A little more. Perfect. There it is. And He's a natural. There. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this, guys. It's so easy. It's easy. <laughs> Well, let me there get any questions, by the way. Alexander's running our board back here. My son Chad's running camera too. All right. Now we're going to turn the onion with the the root end to your other other side. Mm -hmm. There you go. Other way. And now you're going to make cuts all the way down the onion, but not all the way through. This way. Yeah, you want to make slices coming this way. Okay. Across the onion, but don't go all the way through because that root end is going to keep your onion together. Okay. There you go. Make sure your thumb's on top of the onion. There you go. That's the claw grip. You must have looked at the video on how to use a knife. <laughs> That's easy. Okay. Then we'll turn it sideways after you get here. through the last one. Turn it sideways, and now just make some nice thin slices, and you got a perfect dice. Awesome. Look at that. This guy was holding his hand. This is beautiful. Phenomenal. This is beautiful. Great form. Excellent. Now the um, the onions. You want to get the peels out of the way. You're going to put the onions in the bowl. The diced onions. We're going to throw the, um, the peel in the trash can and just put the regular onions in that bowl. And after That's we get okay. the other sides diced up, we're going to go ahead and get this pepper done and we're ready to start cooking. I love it. It's easy. Fun now, in the kitchen. Now the chicken stock we're using today, I made this. I don't use that uh, canned stuff from the store. Yeah. Number one, it's expensive. It's nasty. So I always buy whole chickens because okay. they're a dollar a pound, not six ninety nine a pound for the quarters. And I cut my chicken up myself, but I saved the back carcass, and I saved the legs and the wings, and I just freeze them. And after I have two or three chickens with the parts, mm -hmm. then I make my chicken stock from scratch. That's awesome. Do you want to save this? or? Um, we'll just put that over here on the side, and I'll use that my next stock that I made. Okay. And we'll get that one sliced down real quick, same way, flat side down. And we'll get the slices down, and then we'll make that nice dice, keeping that thumb out of the way. There you go. God, he's got it down. <laughs> Natural. Look at this. <laughs> You'll be making this a lot because this is so easy. For sure. And we'll turn it sideways. There you go. Look at this. Perfect. How's it looking on camera, Chad? Good. Beautiful. <laughs> my wife's going to have me Excellent. dice and onions all the time. Now. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll save that piece right there for my stock. <laughs> now, one way you know you have a, a dull knife is when you start getting all that crying from the onion. I know, I was curious why we're not like yeah. over here. Well, if you have a sharp knife, you're not getting the spray from the onion to come up from that dull knife. Mm. So, always keep your knife sharp. Okay, that's good to know. And we happen to have a knife sharpening video on the YouTube page as well. And your thumb out of the way since it is sharp. Look at that. Oh, yeah. A uh, sharp knife is a safe knife. Okay, now we got our onions down. We're going to put them in line where they used to be. Now we're going to do the pepper. Let's get rid of those last pieces of onion. This is really fun, this part here. You're just going to take off the top and the bottom, lay it sideways. Okay. Just take off the bottom first. There you go. And then take off the top. Okay. Now turn, spin it down flat. Now reach in and grab that clump, C, the C clump out of there, and just throw it in the trash can. That we're not going to use. That's very bitter, by the way. Hmm. Now we'll cut the uh, pepper in quarters. You can cut it once this way and once that way. Okay. Perfect. And then we're going to lay it on the shiny side down. Other way. Shiny side. There you go. Oh. Now you see those white ribs right there? Mm-hmm. Horrible. Bitter. Nasty. Get them out. Yeah, I'm going to give you, um, I can't touch anything. You want to get this little paring knife right here? There you go. And carefully, while cutting away from you, remove those white ribs. Watch your thumb. There you go. And we're going to throw those away along with that seed clump. Okay. Perfect. Is this part of that? Yep, yeah, yeah, go ahead and cut that one off too. Okay. This this part is very bitter. You don't need that. 
There you go. Now that we got them all ready, one more to go. We're going to lay them, keep them laying skin side down. Every time you cut a pepper, you have to have the skin side down because that skin is so tough mm -hmm. that it's easier to go in this way because if you put the skin side up, it's very hard to get that knife through there. Mm. And that's another way to know you have a very dull knife. So what we're going to do is you're going to bring your knife in and make some nice slices, which is going to be a julienne cut, okay. nice and thin, like you're going to make matchsticks, about the width of your pinky. Like this? Yep, just cut straight this across. Yep. A little bit wider. There you go. All the way down. There you go. All the way down. Same with the other, all the other peppers, same thing. Perfect. It's pretty, and I can just sit here and have a little bit of wine. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to get my hands dirty or nothing. It's beautiful. Perfect. I can say this is the first pepper I've ever cut. Well, there you go. I'm learning how to properly cut one right now. This is what's important. <laughs> yep. And then we're going to take them and we're going to line them up. And then we're going to make cross cuts again to make little dice out of them. Okay. And put them right back in the bowl. And we're going to be ready to go after we get the garlic ready. Or just dice them yeah, up? Yeah, just kind of line, line up three or four at a time. Okay. Turn, turn them the other way. This horizontal, way. yep. Line them up. There you go. Make sure they're all all nice and even. Take your knife and just kind of slide them down a little bit. Perfect. And now you're just going to make nice slices to make a nice dice. Okay. Look at that. Is that easy? So easy. It helps to have you here by me, Chef. Yeah, this is, this is what it's all about. <laughs> but I'm learning. I'm gaining confidence as we speak. The first recipe I made, I was 10 years old, stuffed peppers. Okay. It took four hours. Because that was the first time I ever cooked anything. How did it taste? Good. There you go. Anything you cook is going to taste good. <laughs> that <laughs> that is true. They might not like it, but you're going to like it. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> now, do you do any grilling at all? I do grill. There you go. I do What's grill. your favorite thing to grill? Uh, definitely steaks and burgers. Steaks and burgers. I'm That's a, good. I'm a steak and potatoes kind of guy. There you go. <laughs> okay, same thing. We'll get these diced off. That's good. Four at a time might do it. Okay. Let me get the other ones out of your way a little bit. There you go. You got it. You're doing so good. Thank you, baby. Now, the top and the bottom one, I actually, we're going to save that too because I'm going to use that for the salad later tonight. Hmm. Okay. We don't throw anything away. <laughs> and we'll just put the dices, after you get them done, right back in the bowl. We'll put it back in line. And we're going to be ready. Cooking the recipe comes like boom after you get these two things done. Everybody's like, I've never seen this taste. So yeah. Hey, we're cooking from scratch here. We're not, this is, this is a real show. This ain't video, this is live. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anything happens, I'm ready. So don't worry about it. We're okay. We're prepared. We're prepared. A little wine and sharp knives. Yes, perfect. People at home sitting back having a beer, a glass of wine, exactly. or a little iced tea going on. <laughs> and we're making uh, we're making a late lunch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, excited for this. For sure. Yeah. Delicious. All right, Nadia, you want to go ahead and turn on the pot here with okay. the, the burner, and we're gonna get that maybe go to medium heat. Okay. And we're gonna get that thing heated up. You never put anything into a cold pot. You always want to get that pot hot first, so when it goes in, it's going to sizzle on that oil, or saute. Okay. Uh, saute means jump, so when you put something in a pot, it should, you know, be ready to go. Now we're going to go and get this garlic here. I'm going to put these over here. Right over here, yep. Salads. Now you, on the garlic, you're going to remove the top tips where it was connected to the head. The head is the big thing. This, these are cloves that are on the head of garlic. Yep. Right here. Remove the end piece. Let me get this one. I can't touch anything. <laughs> Don't touch it. I can touch my wine. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now lay your knife flat on top of the garlic, and then give it a pop with your with your fist. That's going to pop the skin loose. Just give it a pop. There you go. And just peel the skin right off. Here we go. And then we're going to go ahead and do a dice on this. So with your fingers and your thumb out of the way, just give it some nice slices across. There you go. By the way, when you cook with garlic, even though you wash your hands, you'll smell it on your hands for two Fingers. to three days after. Yes. Oh. That's the natural oils from the garlic. That's awesome. And right. Now use your knife That's and we'll awesome. do what they call a rolling chop, where you're going to roll your knife on top of the garlic. The other way, no, straight up and down. You're going to make oh. a finer dice first. Oh. There you go. 
You can actually take your take the, your fingers out of the way and just take your knife and roll it. That's it. Mm. Now you're going to make a nice finer dice. Scoop it together. Do it again. There it is. Here we go. Now I'm going to give another dice here. Hey folks, if you're just joining in, we're live here in Atlanta, Georgia. We're teaching the millennials how to cook. we got Nadia and Ryan here. And uh, Ryan's just finishing up this uh, dicing up of the onion. Now we're going to take some of the kosher salt to your right. Take a little, little pinch and put it on top of that garlic. Now you're going to use your knife as like a putty knife and smash the garlic down as you... Okay. There you go. Just smash it down. A little more towards you. Bring it closer towards you. There you go. Now you want to smash it down as you bring in the knife this way. Start at the other end of the garlic. There you go. Smash it down. Pull your knife forward. Mm. There you go. You're pureeing the garlic now. Okay. Gotcha. Scoop it back into a pile and do it again. This is so nobody's going to get a piece of garlic when they're eating the, the um, chili. Okay. They'll taste it, but they're not going to get surprised and go, oh, hmm. Thanks for the extra piece of garlic. <laughs> so one more, one more smash on that. There we go. And then we'll just put that right here, scrape it right off your knife onto the um, little ramekin container. There we go. Actually, you know what? That's a big head of garlic. We're just going to use one instead of two because that's kind of a jumbo size head. So we'll just use one and I'll use that garlic for later. I'm going to put that back in line. Now the pot, I'm sure, is going to be feeling pretty warm. You can feel it with your hand there. Yes. Okay, now, um, can you grab the uh, turkey out of the refrigerator? Yes. Always going to keep that refrigerated until you cook it. Now you'll notice behind you, Ryan, what's in that sink behind you? We have some, some hot water, some warm water. And soapy. And a little soap. See, your hands are dirty, right? They are. You want to wash them, right? I do. What happens, what happens if you touch that handle? Uh-oh. It's probably going to get dirty. Uh-huh. And then two days later, say you touch the turkey and then you touch the handle on the faucet. And she comes along and pours a glass of water and touches that. Trouble. So yeah, you, yeah, now you can wash stressed. your hands in the soapy water first, then you can touch the faucet. Awesome. See, it's all about safety here. Okay, let's have the thing up here and go ahead and get that um, knife and just give me a slit right here. We're going to get this removed here. There you go. There you go. Perfect. I'm going to get this out of here. Okay. Get it ready for the pot. And that's ready. Okay. The pot's hot, right? Yes. Okay, we're going to take our oil, pop the top on the oil. Okay. And we're going to give it maybe about two tablespoons of oil. How do I know? Just pour and pour until <laughs> I say. Until we say. Okay. You'll see. That's good. Now we'll go ahead and just toss in the onions and the peppers. Okay. And we'll use your spoon and we'll start the sauteing process. Here's what a smell start coming up. Mm -hmm. I can just pour just this. Dump straight. it right in. Same thing with the um, spoon. Just hit with the spoon. Same with the peppers. There you go. I'm going to bring that temperature down a little bit. There you go. I'm going to put the, the garlic right up here. Now we're cooking the, the onions and the peppers first. Because you don't want to put the garlic in until after the onions and pepper get, has had a chance to get going. That way you won't burn the garlic. If you burn the garlic, it's going to be very bitter. So we're going to let the onions and pepper get cranked up first. And then we'll hit it with this uh, garlic. Can you keep stirring? Keep going. Okay. Keep it moving. You're sauteing. About every third, fourth swirl of the spoon, mm -hmm. you want to have a sip of wine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Now I, have, I actually use wine when I grill, because it's a perfect uh, mechanism for timing your steaks. One glass is rare, two glasses medium. If you have three glasses, it's well done. So there you go. Wow, I'm gonna start using that. It sure. works every time. <laughs> okay, now we're sauteing nicely here. I'm gonna bring the temperature up just a little bit more. I wanna hear some more of that sizzle in there. More than that? That's good. Okay. You're on medium high, perfect. How's that looking? Smells really good. Yeah, I wish we had smell. Smell vision. Smell yeah. vision. yeah, it smells awesome. Maybe you guys can invent that. Yes. <laughs> the smell button on social media. Oh, yep. Well, now that we got a good saute on here, we got color on that onion, right? Yes. Nice 
That's the flavor right there. That's called the caramelization when the sugars are being uh, caramelized out of the onion, which is going to get it phenomenal flavor. Now we can go ahead and dump that onion, that garlic in there. Get that a, you're going to have to use a spoon to scrape it off there or whatever. Oh. There you go. There goes the garlic in. And we're going to saute that just for a little while. It's not going to take more than 10 seconds because we're not going to burn it. Now I want you to open up the middle of the pot. Push all the onions to the one side or around to open up the bottom of that pan. Like a circle? Yep. And then we're going to go ahead and take the turkey and lay it right in the pan. And we'll let it sear for a few minutes. There you go. It, it don't have to be in one piece. Okay. There you go. Now let's bring the temperature up a little bit higher. Now we're going to wait about maybe 10 seconds to get a little sear on that okay. for flavor. Okay. If McDonald's didn't do that, it, their hamburgers would be terrible. <laughs> so now you can start sauteing. Just mix it all up good and chop all it all up. Okay. And you're going to get that meat to its cook. Yeah, we're, we're almost done. I mean, it's just, that's how fast it goes. Wow. That's awesome. And mix the onions in it? Yeah, just keep mix it all together and keep sauteing it up like, like you're making just regular ground beef, but it's turkey. Okay. Much healthier, yeah. delicious flavor. Now, while we're sauteing here, we're going to go ahead and get our thickener done. Okay. All the wet ingredients go into the chili and make it a great flavor, but it's not thick. Okay. And I don't like to use the uh, old slurry where you're using like cornstarch and water and stuff. Right. I don't do a lot of that flour stuff anymore, but we're going to thicken it with some of our ingredients. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the food processor lit off. Okay. And you go, we got one can of our beans, our cannelloni beans. We got one, one can here that I drained and rinsed real good. We're going to go ahead and put that in the processor. Make sure you rinse them well. And then we're going to go ahead and put that one half cup of cheese in there. This is Monterey Jack. You use whatever you like. Sharp cheddar is good too. Now we have four cups of chicken stock that I made, but we took one quarter of a cup and we reserved it out of there. Then go ahead and pour this in here as well. Okay. Now we're just going to put the lid back on and we're going to process this. This is going to be our thickening agent. It's going to make our chili thick at the end. We'll get that popped on a little bit more that way. There you go. Snap it over and then hit the button. And here we go. Look at that. It's time to have another sip of wine. Yes, it is. That's looking really good and thick. Look at that. It looks like a nice paste. It does. Okay, we'll turn it off. Take the lid off. I'm going to carefully get that blade out of there. And we're going to set the blade over here on my paper towel. Okay. Never put the blade in the sink with the soapy water because you're going to reach in there and get cut. So it goes to the side to be washed later. I'll pull the blade out first. I am. There you go. Look at that. I'll knock it off. You just tap the sides. There you go. And how's our saute look? Oh, look at that. The turkey's Hello. looking good. Just set that aside over here and we'll put it in the last thing. Look at that, it's looking good. Let's bring the temp up a little more. Okay. Over to high, there you go. Okay. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's the littlest burner or the smallest burner on the stove, but it's, it's in the best position to be filmed, so I couldn't change the burners around when I got the system here, but that's the way it goes. Now there's, no, there's barely a little bit of pink in there, right? Yes. Now at this point you can actually start to add the other ingredients because that's going to cook as the chili is going to cook. Okay. Right. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the next row we're in. We're going to put in our entire container of our chicken stock. Okay. This is roasted chicken stock. Before I made the stock, I took my chicken parts and roasted them in the oven at 375 for about maybe 20, 30 minutes to get a nice color on them so it has a much richer flavor. We'll go ahead and add these two cans of our diced tomatoes. Now you don't have to use, you don't have to really drain them because I'm stock. Of course, is the thicker stock. These are fire roasted tomatoes to get a little bit more flavor in there. All we're doing now is we're building layers of flavor. All right, that's in there. I know. Now we're gonna add the wine. We're gonna we're putting a half cup of prosecco in there. The Ogio prosecco. The best part. Look at that. Wine adds so much flavor. Now we're going to wait till it starts to get a good simmer. Okay. Before you stir it? Yep. 
Actually, at this point, let's go ahead and put the lid on, okay. and we'll let it simmer for a little bit. Because you can't put the seasonings in until it's boiling. Okay. If you put in the seasonings before it boils, mm -hmm. they'll clump up. Oh, they'll, I didn't know that. Yeah, that way when it's boiling, and we'll, we'll go over that in a couple seconds, okay. and of course we're going to finish with this. So really, only two more things to go with our thickener. So while that's simmering, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so I'm actually a social media influencer. I've been doing it for the past four years. Uh, just recently started doing it full time, and I, it's my dream job. I love doing it. That's great. Sure. So yeah. I mean, what certain things do you actually promote on your channel? Well, of course, and cheers. Mm -hmm. um, I work with clothing brands, lifestyle brands. We do a lot of travel together mm -hmm. as well. So we partner with a lot of different hotels and resorts and stuff like that. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we love it. It's did really you, fun. Did you do any parachuting yet? No, not yet, but we have swam with sharks, and that was really fun. In a cage, right? No. No cage. No cage. Open water. <laughs> Open water. What? Yeah, that, we did it, it for intense. our honeymoon. We uh, actually got to go to Bora Bora, and mm -hmm. you get to swim with sharks, and they just, they bring them in by throwing some raw chicken out, and they tell you to jump in. <laughs> for sure. That's Definitely great. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How fast can you swim? <laughs> not fast enough. <laughs> Luckily, wow. I didn't have to in this situation. Yeah. 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 That's, That's great. Yeah. So what's the... What's the most exciting brand that you actually promoted? Um, I would probably say, I mean, definitely working with resorts is like our favorite thing. Mm -hmm. So either like Fairmont or we've worked with some wineries in the past. It's very, it's really hard to pick, like yeah. for sure, because um, I definitely partner with brands that I love mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, are someone that I want to work with. But I would say what our favorite ones are the ones where we get to travel, for yeah. sure. Now I put a link to her Instagram down in the, uh, the description below on the video. So you want to check out her site and see all the, the neat things that, that uh, Nadia is doing here. Now, what do you do? So to kind of piggyback off her, yes. if you will, I own a social media and digital marketing agency. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, the core of what I do. But I have some other ventures like mm -hmm. an e-commerce store. And then I actually have Ron White University where I teach people how to make money online, how to brand themselves and how to grow on social media. So. Oh, that's great. That's good. Yeah. So what's your favorite brand that you like to promote? Or item, or for me, um, anything that, that we can kind of partner on. So mm -hmm. you know, I love anything where we can create like a YouTube video. Anytime mm -hmm. we can travel, like she said, uh, yeah. we're young. We haven't got into the whole the whole kid part of our lives yet. Yeah. So yes. we're trying to go and see as much as we can. But obviously, COVID has kind of limited what we can do this yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. twenty twenty sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what are you gonna do, right? So I, it's been a little difficult. Now I did yeah. see one of your videos on your Instagram of you guys in the hot air balloon. That was cool. That was really fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. we got to go uh, there and celebrate his 30th birthday. Mm -hmm. Me and uh, my really good girlfriend. We actually surprised the, uh, her husband as well on a hot air balloon ride. Mm -hmm. It was like 4 a.m. and we were telling them, yeah. you know, you guys don't know what's going on, but I promise you'll like it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. There's a YouTube video on, yeah. on it, so go check it out. Yeah. Now, what's your YouTube fun. channel? Yeah, so we actually, we both have like our individual ones, mm -hmm. um, but we mainly do our couples channel. So yeah. we do a lot of different vlogs, but we do a lot of travel vlogs on there yeah. as well. So that's like our favorite thing to do. Oh, so. that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's check and see if we got any steaming going on okay. here. I can just... Just pull it up? Okay. I didn't know if it was like hot. We're so almost getting a simmer going here. Okay. Oh, I can't touch it. Push, push the pot a little bit more towards the center of the burner. Okay. There you go. And we'll pop the lid more. back on and get it simmering. Is that little, good? Push it a little more it's this way. Hot. <laughs> like, yep. Or just take a paper towel yeah. and just yeah. bump bump the middle of the pot to just make it slide over. After you cook a lot, you burn your fingers and I you know, don't like, feel anything anymore. Maybe that's like telling a sign that I don't cook a lot. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> hand has all the cuts because <laughs> this hand holds the knife. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Makes sense. Yep. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. So we'll get a simmer going on this. Okay. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and get all of our dead animals out of the way here. We'll get our cans in the trash and everything cleared out that we're not going to be using anymore. Okay. The only thing left is going to be the seasoning and the beans and the thickening agent, and that's going to be it for that. In the meantime, I'm going to talk a little bit about some wines over here. Um, Bailey, who's with the marketing arm, brought us some really cool wines. I'm actually drinking right now this Magistrate Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, this is a New Zealand wine. It comes from the Marlborough region of New Zealand, which, of course, is probably the best place in the, in the world to grow Sauvignon Blanc grapes. The climate is perfect. About 71% of New Zealand's wines are Sauvignon Blanc grapes. And the thing about this wine is it's not that expensive. That's why I like it, because with COVID, everybody's on a budget these days. 
So you want to kind of keep an eye on what's going on with your things. You're going to be cooking stuff that's going to make sense. You're going to have, there's enough there to feed, you know, five, six people. So this Sauvignon Blanc starts off with a little bit of a grassiness, which is why I like it, because it's a little bit dry, but it blooms. You get a nice pineapple in there, and you get a little bit of an acid sense, which makes it go great with food. You only want to drink sweet wine for dessert wines. That's what dessert wines are made of. Incidentally, you should always have a bottle of sweet wine in your house just in case people show up unannounced for dinner. <laughs> because if you don't have enough food, you give them some sweet wine, they will not eat dinner. It will ruin their appetite. <laughs> wow. The sugar That's will go right to their gut. advice. Yep. Genius. So always have a bottle of yes. sweet. Remember that. That's in case really somebody good. shows up. Uncle That's Bob's a here. takeaway. Yes. That is. Uh, next we have a, uh, this is the chalkboard, Cab uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this wine is, is very good if you like uh, raspberry, okay. a little bit of vanilla, mm -hmm. um, and a little bit of a cassis, almost like a, um, not a peppery, but it has more of like a, um, what's that, cloviness, like a little mm. clove on the finish. And this would be phenomenal with your grilled steaks when you're hitting home there with the grilled steaks. Awesome. Uh, make sure you're going to let this air out for a while. All wines taste better, of course, after they hit the air for a little while. Storing the wine? No. Leave them laying down to keep the corks wet. But when you drink them, you want to make sure they get plenty of air. Because air is what makes that wine really open up. Um, especially with uh, if you have like a carafe. If you don't yeah. have a carafe, I recommend getting one. Mm -hmm. And you pour the wine in there and swirl it on the table mm -hmm. and let it really get aired, aired out. The wine gotcha. will taste ten times better. Mm -hmm. The last one here is going to be the Storyteller Pinot Noir. The Pinot Noir is actually the name of the grape. Um, this particular one um, is, is uh, Sonoma. This is not from the north uh, northeast. It's more from the um, central California, a little bit north in the Sonoma. Uh, the soil in Sonoma is probably the richest for red wines. Some of the best Cabernets, Zinfandels come from the Sonoma region. And this Pinot Noir has a nice, uh, I would say, a hint of cranberry. Okay. So if you're looking for a wine to have with turkey dinner for Thanksgiving, mm. Pinot Noir. It's almost like you put a little bit of cranberry sauce in the wine. It's going to have a nice finish to go, well, it's not too dry, not too sweet, it's in the middle of the road. But it's a medium bottle, uh, medium bodied wine. Mm. This one here, of course, is a lot more intense. Uh, this will kind of, you know, take the skin off your teeth. This one here, <laughs> much more softer and smoother. So it's, it's going to go great with that. Even the pumpkin pie at the end of the dinner is going to go oh, good with the Pinot okay. Noir on there. Wow. So, incidentally, this recipe, when you have your turkey for Thanksgiving, save that carcass and use it to make turkey stock. Oh, and you'll have the same stuff that's yeah. even better than chicken stock when you make this later down the road. Okay. And another thing is when you make this after Thanksgiving, yeah. don't put the turkey in it and be getting like we did with the ground turkey. Mm -hmm. Save your diced leftover turkey at the end. That's the last thing to go in, so you're going to have turkey chunks in your chili, not yeah. the ground turkey. Okay. So there's something better for Thanksgiving instead of flaming turkey wings, which we're getting sick of. <laughs> we got a simmer going here. How's that looking? Okay. Go ahead and use this if you want. Yeah. It's not going to be too hot. I don't touch anything there. Oh, look at that. That's nice. That looks awesome. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to let's put the thickener in first. Just pull the lid off and just use a spoon and spoon that right into there. And this is going to thicken uh, the actual chili, give it some beautiful body and flavor and texture. Cannelloni beans. They call them cannelloni because there's more than one in the, in the, in the can. They're not alone. <laughs> And just stir that That's in. A good one, I know, right? It smells really good. Well, my dad was the king of the one liners. I love one liners, they're really great. I miss my dad. Here we go. Now, look how that's starting to nicely thicken up there. That puree is going to melt right into the chili and give it some beautiful body. Now, I did not salt my stock. I never put salt in my stock because okay. sometimes I want to reduce them down even further. Mm -hmm. And if you do, you're going to get a salt bomb. So I can't. Add salt when you're cooking, not when you're making the stocks, especially with beef stock. I'll, I'll make a beef stock in a huge pot that's maybe two gallons, and I'll make my regular beef stock, but then I'll take a quarter of it and go all the way down to about maybe a quarter cup. That's mm -hmm. my demi-glace. 
Okay. And that'll be another video down the road with that for the steaks. <laughs> Do we keep stirring? Yep, we're gonna get them. The simmer's returning. Okay. God, we're almost there now. Now that the simmer's returning, as soon as you get a good boil on it, you're gonna pour in these seasonings as you're stirring. Okay. That way it won't clump up. Any questions? The whole no. thing? Mm -hmm. A little bit at a time. You want to you want to pour it in. That that is um, it's three tablespoons of chili powder, two tablespoons of cumin, and one half teaspoon of cinnamon. The cinnamon is the secret. Don't tell anybody. The cinnamon will give it that flavor that nobody's going to know what it is. But if you put more than one half teaspoon, they're going to know immediately what it is. So keep them guessing. Yeah, it does. I love cinnamon. Too. Does that smell awesome or what? Yes. There you go. That way it won't clump up and you go a little bit at a time. Boy, that smells good. Hey, you guys are good cooks. Well, you're teaching us. Look at that. Learning from the amazing. best. Isn't it yes. easy? Have a sip of wine. Yes. This, this makes it easy Cheers. for sure. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Way to go. <laughs> now look at that boil in there. Now we're going to finish with the beans. Now why do we put the beans in dead last? Any, any ideas? I'm not sure. I'm they'll really disintegrate sure. in no time. Really? really? If you put them in too early, they'll break apart and you won't even know you had beans in there. Wow. So okay. we're, they're already cooked, which they actually cook them in the can, by the way. Same with tuna fish. Okay. Mm -hmm. They put tuna fish in the can, put water in it, and bake it. That's how you get tuna fish cooked in the can. It's like the beans are cooked. So all we're doing now is warming up the beans. Hey, I think we're ready to eat. This looks really good. Sounds good to me. I know. We just uh, turn off that burner there. Traditionally, you after you're done, you want to let it sit for maybe a few minutes to kind of let just the flavors kind of meld together and okay. come together. But I say we go ahead and grab one of those plates and bowls there, and we'll start doing some ladling, and we'll start lining them up up here. Uh, now you notice that they're underneath that bowl is a wet paper towel. Yes. You know why? No. The bowl will not slide off the plate now. Okay, that makes sense. Oh. Learn that from a waiter. <laughs> Interesting. Same thing with the cutting board. Same thing. Paper towel underneath the bottom, it won't slide. Wow. I've used that tree. Speaking of cutting boards, I make the cutting boards on for my company. If you want to check it out on the website, we have seven left. Okay. If you're looking for something for a great gift for someone for oh, Christmas. So. Boy, does that look awesome. That's so good. Look at that. Smell on this. Smells good. It smells mm. amazing. This is going to be easy and delicious. Mm. So what I'm going to have you do, Ryan, is taste yours and then salt as much as you want. Because okay. it's your particular bowl, you're going to add your own salt. Okay. And I can tell you now, you're going to need some salt. Might be a little hot though, be careful. Here we go. Now I can touch the plate when I'm eating now. <laughs> I just can't touch it when I'm eating. Let me taste mine. Oh man, that's awesome. You know, we don't really need a lot of salt. I have just a little bit. Just a little. Just a little pinch for me. That's good. Thank you. Look at that. How's it looking? Now right behind you, on the counter over there, Ryan, is our uh, cheese, our sh shredded uh, cheddar jack. And we're gonna go ahead and grab yourself a nice pinch of that and, and top your chili with the cheese if you like. And you can use sour cream too, give a little dollop of sour cream. Mm -hmm. But I recommend putting the sour cream on top of the cheese so it won't sink in and nobody sees it. Yes. Cheese. Cheese, you gotta have uh, cheese. Is that it's easy? Really... Cheese. Look at that. Well, I'll tell you what, I think you guys, guys passed 100%. You get your cooking diploma. Yes. Yay! This was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Well, with yeah. the guidance. Good job, you guys. Congratulations yes. on your uh, first. Uh, Millennials cooking class with us. Can't yes, wait that you guys teach you. me how to do social media thank stuff. You. But I uh, appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Hey, thanks thank for you. watching, everybody. And we'll see you next time on our live Cooking with Millennials. <laughs>